My name is Daniel Bonds. I'm a meteorologist with WLTX and we do have a couple of weather experiments that you can do at home yourself. Now these are very simple. I've practiced these a few times. Hopefully they work while we're actually recording them, but I've tried these a few times. I'm basically using things that I had at my house. So these are some simple little weather experiments that will hopefully give you a better idea of some real life things that happen in the weather and they both actually involve clouds. We see clouds almost daily, but clouds are very complicated and they can vary. Clouds can grow very tall or appear flat like a pancake. They're typically white in color, but can also be different shades of gray or brilliant yellow, orange, or red. They can weigh tens of millions of tons, yet float in the atmosphere. Some clouds can mean good weather, some clouds can be bad weather. Their absence can be a good thing after a flooding event, or they can be a bad thing during a drought. Clouds provide relief from the heat when there is direct sunlight, but they also can trap warmth, leading to higher temperatures, especially during the nighttime hours. Rain from clouds helps the crops grow, but can make driving very difficult at times, reducing visibility. They come in infinite shapes and sizes. Sometimes clouds look like things too. If you ever looked up at the sky, you can kind of see shapes and clouds of things that you normally see kind of cool, but clouds can be carried along by winds of up to 150 miles per hour or can remain stationary while the wind passes through them. They can form behind high flying aircraft or dissipate as the plane flies through them. And they're not confined to Earth, but they're also found on other planets as well. So we're going to do a little experiment trying to make a cloud in a bottle. Like I said, I tried this before. It did work. And this is just stuff that you can use around your house. Now, if you're going to try this one at home, uh, maybe get a parent to help you with this, a guardian or somebody older to help you because it does involve a match. So you do want to get a little bit of help. You don't want to be playing with matches or anything like that, but you want to get a little help with this one. So I got a bottle here. It's kind of a slim bottle, drinking bottle I used the other day. And the first thing I'm going to do is I filled it up, or the first thing I did is I filled it up about three quarters of the way, and I'm going to shake it up a little bit. That's going to saturate the air. You see this air here, this little air pocket there? That's going to saturate the air. And so I'm going to open it up. Well, let me close it first, explain you to what's going on. When you squeeze it, that increases the pressure. And the ideal gas law states that when you increase pressure, that does increase temperature. So when I squeeze this bottle, that increases the, the pressure here, thus it increases the temperature. When I release it, it releases the pressure, thus decreases the temperature very slightly. So that's going to be important in this experiment. Let me dry my hands off. I still got a little bit of water on them. And I'm going to light a match. Like I said, don't do this without help from an older adult or at least an adult and it and it lit the first try that's even better so I'm gonna let it burn a second and then I'm gonna put it in the bottle now when I squeeze the bottle that increases the pressure now when I release it if you can see it I created a little bit of a cloud there now I'm going to squeeze it again. That increases the pressure, increases the temperature. But as soon as I release it, it cools slightly and that water vapor condenses on that smoke nuclei. And so that's what happens. That's exactly what happens in the sky. You can see it pretty well there. That the water vapor, it rises, it cools, and then condenses on nuclei and that creates the clouds. And eventually those clouds if they get big enough, they can produce rain and then raindrops and then those raindrops fall to earth and then it starts all over again. The water cycle continues. So a little experiment, it did it, did it again. Pretty cool. Again, you want to try that. What happens is you're increasing the pressure, you're increasing the temperature slightly, but then as we release that pressure, the temperature drops slightly and the water condenses onto that smoke or that, that very fine smoke particle. So a pretty cool experiment that you can do at home using things basically you, you can find around your house. For the second one we're going to do, it involves once again water and clouds. This one though is a little bit different. These are the dangerous types of clouds that sometimes we can see in South Carolina. So we're going to try to make a tornado in a bottle. But first we want to talk about tornadoes just a touch. Here in South Carolina, tornadoes can occur any time of the year, but they're more common in the spring months. 
They can happen at any time of the day, too, but in general, they're more likely during the afternoon hours. Typically, the tornadoes that do occur in South Carolina are weak, EF0 to EF1 storms. But occasionally, we can experience stronger tornadoes in the Palmetto State. In April of 2020, a tornado outbreak across the state produced one EF4, seven EF3s, and four EF2 tornadoes. This was the fourth largest tornado outbreak in South Carolina since 1950. If you're under a tornado warning, you want to move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a sturdy building. Avoid all the windows. If you're in a mobile home, a vehicle, or outdoors, move to the closest substantial shelter and protect yourself from flying debris. So tornadoes can be pretty dangerous, obviously, but we're going to try to make one in a bottle to kind of show you how they, they work, how these vortex work. So what I did once again, I got two two liter bottles. These are ones that my kids drank over the past week or so. And I got a washer. I found this washer at the house and it's just a, a standard washer. I'm going to put this on one of the bottles and then I'm gonna get duct tape. Now they do make a little contraption that you can put on both ends of a two liter bottle and you can find them on like Amazon and things like that. I had duct tape at the house so I figured it was just as easy to find use duct tape. I will say with the duct tape it does leak a little bit but it will work. So I'm gonna put this bottle, oh, you see it's leaking a little bit already. I'm gonna put this bottle on top of that one then I'm lining it up with the hole with the other one. And I got my matches caught on it. There we go. And I'm going to wrap this around the two bottles to get them connected with the washer in between the two. And so what this is going to do, it's almost like a water hourglass, you know, the sand hourglass. So I'm going to squeeze it a couple times and hopefully the duct tape holds. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it upside down with the water here. I'm going to spin it. We'll spin it counterclockwise because majority of the tornadoes in the northern hemisphere do spin counterclockwise. I'm going to spin it counterclockwise. And then what's going to happen is this will create a little bit of a, a vortex. It'll create a tornado in a bottle, kind of like the clouds with a thunderstorm, that tornado forming, then touching down. So here's, let's try it. Let me add one more thing. I didn't have any glitter at home, but you could add glitter. You could add maybe some food coloring, and that makes it show up a little bit better. But let's, let's try it. I'm going to do it counterclockwise. Let's spin it, spin it, spin it, and let's see if the tornado forms. Hopefully you can see that tornado forming pretty good right there, that vortex. And, and like I said, if you had some debris in here, some glitter or some food coloring, that would make it shine or show up even better. And you notice it's kind of cool. It, it lasts for a few seconds, but it does give you a good idea of how a tornado would form in an actual environment. So let's let that one finish up and I'll do it one more time. I don't know if I should try it again since it worked the first time. Let's try it one more time. Let's go counterclockwise. And there it is. Pretty cool. It looks like a tornado. So hopefully you learned something from these two cloud experience, uh, experiments. Like I said, a lot of this stuff is, is stuff you have around the house and relatively inexpensive to, to, to put together. And again, if you use matches, make sure you get your parents or somebody, an adult, to help you with that. But hopefully you learned a little something. You can kind of think about how the world or the weather world works and hope you enjoyed it. Have a great rest of the day. I'm News 19 Chief Meteorologist Efren Afonte. Meteorologists use thermometers every day to measure the air temperature, and now you can do the same. So how about we go ahead and start making one at home? What you need to start out with is an index card or a piece of paper. Mark lines on it like this about half an inch apart from top to bottom. You'll also need two pieces of tape. You got any extra Play-Doh? or some modeling clay you'll need, and a clear straw, and a clear bottle. It could be a soda bottle, a small or a big one, and you'll need a little bit of food coloring. 
What you first need to start to do is take your food coloring and put that into the water, just so that it's not clear water anymore. Then, take your marked index card and tape it to the top of the straw. Now that you have that connected, put the straw into the bottle, and when you fill up the water, make sure that you don't fill the water completely all the way to the top, just a little bit over three quarters of the way. Now that you're done with that, now you're gonna make sure that the straw goes about halfway or three quarters down, and then when you finally get that part done, take that extra Play-Doh or modeling clay, and then put it right at the top of the bottle where the straw has come through. That will hold the straw not only in place, but it'll keep it straight. And once you got that all set, you'll notice that every time the temperature changes, the water bottle and the little lines, well, they'll start moving back and forth. And this will be over time, maybe every hour or so, you'll start to notice that that line will change. That's how we measure the temperature. If it gets warmer, it'll go up. If it gets cooler, it goes down. Now that you have the whole thing put together, use an actual thermometer and go outside and measure what the temperature is outside and where your marks are, and then put the numbers corresponding beside it. Do it again about an hour later, or an hour later after that, and just keep on making marks based on the accuracy of the thermometer that you're actually using outside. And now that you have that done and all marked up, now you have your own News 19 homemade thermometer. Have fun. Meteorologists use rain gauges every day because, well, simply we need to know how much rain has fallen in any given hour or any given day. You can make one yourself, so let's go ahead and start off with. First, you'll need to start off with a two liter bottle, an empty soda bottle, and make sure that you take all of the wrappers off of it. A clear bottle will do. Then you'll need about six inches of masking tape this regular masking tape will do, and a ruler. Now that you have the pieces together, with your parents' permission or with their help, go ahead and cut off the top of the two liter bottle. And once you get done with that, then take your masking tape and put it right next to your ruler and make the mark exactly as you see it. Zero, one, two, all the way up to five. Now that you got that done, now you have the pieces that you need to start putting your rain gauge together. First thing you want to do, fill up the water bottle on the bottom about an inch deep. This way it keeps the water bottle from tipping over. From where that line ends, take your masking tape, put the zero right where the water top off in the bottom of your bottle, and then just make that straight up the side of the bottle. Now that you got that done, Take that piece that you cut off off the top of the two liter bottle, turn it upside down. Oh, by the way, make sure that the cap is off of the top. Now that you have that set, you do not have to do anything else because now you have your completed rain gauge because every time it rains outside, your rain gauge made out of this bottle will have the water collect, it'll fill in, and it'll fill on the inside of the bottle, and then you can measure how much rain that you've gotten. No matter what time frame you're looking at, once you got that done, if you want to measure it every hour or every day, go ahead and mark it, show how much rain you got, and then this way you have an event made through, and then just empty the bottle out, start all over again, but when you start all over, don't forget to put a little bit of water on the bottom so it fills up right to that zero. And now you have your own News 19 rain gauge. Have fun. And meteorologists use anemometers. Well, Anonometers. Well, let's say that together. It is an anonometer. We use anonometers every day because we want to know what the wind speeds are outside so we can tell you on the TV. Well, you can make your own, so how about we go ahead and do so? First, you're going to need regular cupcake liners. Not the metal ones, just regular paper ones. You want to color it up, you can use those as well. You'll also need a needle or a pin. That, obviously, you're gonna to have to check with your parents on, on what you would be able to use. A regular good old-fashioned pencil. Doesn't have to be sharpened, because this is what we're actually gonna stand our anemometer on. And then you'll need two cardboard strips. And in the middle of the cardboard strips, you'll need to make a little bit of a cut, not all the way through, but just halfway on both pieces that you will use. 
doesn't matter what length. If you want to do three inches, five inches, half a foot, that'll be entirely up to you. Then you need just regular good old-fashioned thumbtacks. You'll need four thumbtacks to go along with your four cupcake liners. And finally, a thread spool. Now, if you don't have an empty spool that your parents don't and that your parents have, maybe find something that at least will be a little bit of weight because that's where the pencil is going to rest upon. Now, when you put it together, make sure that you take those two pieces of cardboard that you made the little indention on and then put them together so this way they make a crisscross. After you do that, take your cupcake liners and your thumbtacks, put the thumbtack right in the middle of the cupcake liner and put it on the end of your cardboard piece. You will do that on each one and make sure that you have all of them facing out from each other. Well, how does that look? Oh, well, this is what you're going to look at. You're going to look at each of the pieces. Notice they are all facing the same direction. And then you put that needle or that pin right through the middle into the eraser of your pencil that's already sticking out from your spool. Now you have the weight to hold it on. Now we have the spinning mechanism. Now what do we need? Well, simply wind. The faster the wind blows, the faster your nanometer is going to move. This is how we gauge how fast or how slow the winds move. And now you have your own wind gauge. Go ahead and try it. Have fun. I'm News 19 Chief Meteorologist Efren Afante. Meteorologists use barometers every day because we need to know what the pressure of the air outside is on any given day. Now you can make your own News 19 barometer. Let's go ahead and make some right now. First, you're going to need an open glass. Now, when you get this open glass, check with your parents what kind of glass, but make sure that it has an open top and you can make sure that it also has a wide bottom. You need a regular pencil, doesn't have to be sharpened, then have a straw. It can be a clear straw or a colored straw. You'll need either a sewing needle or a toothpick. So that obviously you need to check with your parents on which one you can get. A spool so that this way we can put the pencil through it. And then a mark index paper. Now on this mark index card, you need to have two pieces of tape attached to it and do markings on your card similar to this. The markings will be about a quarter inch apart and they will be pointing out in each direction from top to bottom. And then finally a balloon, just a regular balloon. Does it have a hole in it? Well, make sure it doesn't on it because we're going to take that balloon and put it on top of the glass. What you'll need to do is take that balloon and stretch it over the top of the glass. That's why you don't need any holes in it. And then once you have that covered on top of the glass, then take your straw, glue the straw to the top of the balloon, and then glue your toothpick or sewing needle on the end of the other part of the straw. Here's your mark index tape, and this is how you're going to be marking them. You first make a line in the middle that goes straight out, and then the next two lines on top and on bottom, just angle them just a little bit so they're pointing a little bit down and a little bit up. Then you're going to put an H on the top of it and an L on the bottom of it. Take your mark index card and that two pieces of tape that you have, put it right on your pencil, and then the pencil, put it right in the spool. And that spool is simply just going to hold your pencil and your card so that way it's in place. Now take that, put it right next to your balloon glass, and then the needle, you don't have to have it actually attached to it. It's going to be right in front of it because this needle is going to move. How's it going to move? Well, as the air temperature changes, we're going to watch as this needle is going to start shifting. So you can shift up or down. And remember, the needle is connected to the straw and it's glued, as well as the top of the balloon that's on the glass glued to your straw. This is what's going to happen. As the air temperature starts to lower, well, the pressure is going to push that needle down. And this is where we know that we have more of a low pressure in the area. Well, what happens in the opposite? Well, if we have high pressure, then the needle is going to move up. This is indicating that there's higher pressure in the atmosphere. And that is how you have it now listed. 
Now you have your own barometer. Go ahead and make it and have fun.